happy Wednesday, everybody. It's actually Reese's birthday. So why don't you go give him a happy birthday down below? That's also one of the reasons why my skin is redder is because we were out celebrating his birthday yesterday. Anyways, we're going to celebrate talking about all of the hot news, the tech news that's been going on. We got big Navi information that's happening. We also got some new details out of Sony for their PS5. And then Photoshop decides that, hey, what if everything was fake but looked real? Yeah, let's talk about that after we talk about today's video sponsor, Synergy. My friend, Synergy is the application that's going to allow you to use multiple devices using one keyboard and mouse. Whether it's your home desktop and your work laptop, trying to make sure that you don't have to rotate or pivot to go use a different device and you just want to stay in one spot, Synergy can help you with that. You have another computer on the opposite side of the room that you need to control because you're just weird like that. Synergy can help you with that. Whether it be Mac, Linux, Windows, or even Raspberry Pi, you can use Synergy to get it all set up and synced together. There's no limits on the devices you can set up. You can copy and paste images and text between different computers, and it runs in the background so you can get all of that set up. So if you want to check them out at the link in the video description, they have a basic and a pro model, pro model having SSL encryption to make sure that you're actually encrypted between the computers as well. So check them out at the link in the video description, and big thanks to Synergy for sponsoring today's episode. Now let's go ahead and talk about Big Navi because we have all of the information at this point. This is coming from a video cards article where they have said that they've been able to verify with most people that they have on their back end with regards to the specs that they're going to be talking about and the fact that AMD is providing a lot of details to add in board partners this week, including working drivers at the final names and all of that. So they cross-checked all of this information and here is the chart that breaks it all down. The RX 6900 XT is apparently going to be the official name of the GPU that has the Navi 21 XTX core, which features 80 compute units, a two gigahertz game clock, and a 2.3 gigahertz boost clock, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 256 bit bus. The RX 6800 XT has 72 compute units, roughly the same clock speeds, the same 16 gigabytes of VRAM, and then the RX 6800 has 64 compute units, 1.8 gigahertz game clock, 2.1 gigahertz boost clock and still that same 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It seems like one of AMD's strategies, at least for the launch that's happening in one week, October 28th is when AMD is going to be announcing all these cards, is to just have more VRAM than NVIDIA's flagship card. So we're expecting all of these to get announced next week, October 28th, as I mentioned, in case you want to come watch it with us, we'll be live twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. But there's also the RX 6700 XT and 6700 based on Navi 22, with the 12 gigabytes of VRAM that's expected to be announced sometime later with a launch in January. So that's the general idea of getting the 6900 XT all the way down to the 6800 just next week, but the more affordable options coming sometime later next year. Now it's hard to say where the pricing is gonna come in. I think that's probably something that AMD is gonna keep really close to their chest at this point because they know that that's the only way that they're more than likely going to beat Nvidia. At least that's my speculation. I don't see AMD triumphing over what ain't Nvidia has, but if they do, I'll be excited, but I'm not going to bet too big on that. We also got some more power information on the Navi 21 XT cards, and it appears that they're going to have a 320 watt TGP, so total graphics power, which includes 235 watts for the GPU alone, and then wattage for the rest of the stuff that's going on the board. So these might not necessarily consume less power than the RTX 30 series. Now we also got some information about the RX 6800 XT, as we mentioned, is supposed to have a clock speed of around 2.2 to 2.3 gigahertz. Well, apparently, according to Igor's lab, he said that there is a very special board partner who's working on a golden sample of this chip to get it up to 2.5 gigahertz 2577 megahertz was the actual information which is insanely high for a graphics card getting those clock speeds up appears to be the benefit that amd has nvidia doesn't really have that with the rtx 30 series but this might be the way that you actually get amd's rdna 2 technology to scale to the top end higher clock speeds but then that should also mean that if you just lower the clock speeds you could get more efficient models and put those in laptops our DNA 2 and laptops, AMD, please. Let's go ahead and talk about Intel's graphics for a second. The first game to show that you could use Project Z graphics for their recommended settings is Amnesia Rebirth, with them quoting that the Intel Project Z HPG is in line with an RX 580 for their game, in case that wants to tell you 
where you think Intel is coming in for their uh, new graphics card that's coming out. Sony also with the next generation PlayStation 5, they said that they're gonna be optimizing the way the PS5 fan works in a couple of ways. Number one, they're gonna be monitoring temperatures, which of course you have to with fan speed, but they're also apparently going to be monitoring the behavior of the game to control the fan, which is an intriguing way to do things. I'm not sure how that's necessarily gonna pan out and if that's a better idea than simply just reporting on temperature and re responding to that. But it could potentially pr predict uh, like spikes in temperatures that are coming and then be able to ramp up before those happens. I'm not quite sure. Now let's talk about Microsoft for a second. They've announced that Halo Master Chief Collection on the Xbox Series S and X will be 120 FPS. Just a quick little update. And HyperX updating the Cloud 2 to become wireless, which is Super exciting to me. This is one of my favorite gaming headsets that I've ever touched. I bought mine first back in April of 2015, and they are now coming out with a wireless version, which they're claiming is gonna have 30 hours of battery life and 20 meters of wireless range. It's gonna be available November 20th for $150, which is steep, but I still have not found a headset that's quite like this one out on the market. The microphone was never very good, but the headset itself made me very happy. Now, what also might make some people happy, DJI updating the pocket to become the pocket too having higher quality footage and all of that it's not something that i'm really into it's actually kind of a niche market as far as i can see but they've updated it as did adobe with photoshop showing off new ai features including neural filters and sky replacements which allow you to use ai tools to just basically make whatever the heck you want it can colorize black and white photos it can do super zoom it can change people's lighting in the photos it can move people's faces age and facial expression it's nuts and it's scary but it's here and what's also here is apparently Netflix's success with them announcing that in Q4 they should be able to hit 200 million subscribers because they're anticipating adding another 6 million customers at the end of the year which would put them at 201 and they said that Project Power which is the movie that the YouTuber Casey Neistat is in reached 75 million of their customers and this is not going to reach 75 million people but the GMC Hummer electric truck has been announced officially it is is insane a thousand horsepower zero to 60 in about three seconds it looks intriguing has ultium batteries has the crab walk where it can go sideways has all of the things that you would expect in a next generation electric vehicle and it starts at one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars for the one that's coming out in fall of next year they have cheaper editions that come out later the one that's coming out fall 2022 is a hundred thousand spring 2023 is ninety thousand and spring 2024 is eighty thousand with all of them having less range less motors less horsepower and less torque all the way down the line what do you think of the new g GMC Hummer EV. I want to hear from you down below. And Cyberpunk wants to make sure that you can hear people's words on their face because they used AI to dialogue lip sync everything in all of the 10 languages that they're going to have for the game. So full lip sync on every character in all 10 dub languages using an AI processing technique, which is intriguing. We'll see how it pans out. They said it's better facial animations than The Witcher 3. I'm curious to see how this works. And I want this, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's not coming to my region in APEC in Europe. Square Enix is going to be releasing a $40 dual game cartridge for Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. I would, I want this. Come on, release this in America, please, Square Enix. But don't release this anymore. I can't tell you how happy I was to read this news. Apparently, Quibi is not doing so hot. Who would have guessed? I could have never imagined. It's been a little bit since I went on a Quibi rant, but it's, it's ample time. Apparently... Quibi chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg looked into selling off everything because they're not making money. They're likely still not making money. Things are not happening. Jeffrey Katzenberg has told people that he may have to shut down the company and they report that he tried to sell its content companies, including NBC, Universal, and Facebook. Of course they did. It's awful. But of course, that coincides with the fact that they are now available on Apple TV. So if you want to go down with this ship, you can do so while watching it on your couch. But then what about the revolutionary turnstile technology where you can watch it in portrait and landscape? Landscape. What about that, Quibi? I can't do that on my TV. My TVs don't rotate. Huh, Quibi? Huh? I don't have to ask this question much longer. Sell it off, Katzenberg. It was a failure to begin with, and we all knew it. But not this episode of Hot News. I think this episode of Hot News was a success. What's also a success is today's video sponsor, which is Synergy, the all-in-one app that allows you to control multiple devices with one keyboard and mouse wherever you are. Mac, Linux, Windows, control all of the things. Friends, links in the video description. Check them out. 
Check out yourself in a mirror because I'm gone.